Oh, that's going to annoy my neighbors. There is a bad habit that we can get into as readers. One that I can get into, one that you probably can get into, and that's not actually appreciating what we're doing while we're doing it. And really, we start with probably good intentions. We want to read. We want to appreciate what we're doing. We want to learn from it. We want to see beauty in it. We want to become better people through it, whatever it is. But then what starts to slip in is a different attitude. And that attitude is one in which we want to have read. We want to be done with the book more than we want to actually be in the process of reading it. And those are the two things I want to contrast. That is, one wanting to read versus the other wanting to have read. Hey everybody, welcome to the Sanctus Forum. I am Michael Stewart Robb, better known as Mike. And if you watched last week's video all the way to the end, you know that I promised that there were going to be kids here today helping me behind the scenes with this video and there are no kids here. Um, there's none of them hiding in the corners or anything like that. There's a computer error at the, at the school and therefore the kids couldn't actually come. They're doing other things today. Uh, yeah, so in case you were hoping to see some kids, I don't know, you have to go somewhere else. Uh, today, I want to do uh, a little bit more talking about this book that I talked about, I don't know, a couple weeks ago by Alan Jacobs, The Pleasures of Reading in an Age of Distraction. It's a bunch of mini essays about, about reading and about how to read and particularly about how to read for, for pleasure. And Alan Jacobs is a good writer, a delightful writer. And he called my attention to something that, um, well, I've already introduced it. And that's that we often read with the wrong attitude. Uh, the attitude is we want to get to the place where we have read a book. Uh, we want to check it off of our list. We want to put it onto our shelf. And therefore, the actual process of reading the book kind of gets uh, shortcutted. We just try to rush through it because what we want really in the end is just to have be done. And I think there are some many, I think there are, let me try to say that again. I think there are many reasons why we can kind of get into that attitude. And um, one is, you know, you start something, there's always this sort of sense of like, well, I, I just, I want to, I want to finish. Maybe it's difficult, the reading that we're doing. Maybe the beauty in it is a little hard to appreciate. Maybe we're not learning as much from it as we thought we would learn. We're not changing as much from that reading as we thought we would. And we kind of think, well, I just like to be done with this. And so I'm going to kind of push through it. I think we need to sometimes just sort of slow down and just sort of say, you know, maybe there were greater reasons for picking this book than I'm currently aware of and maybe remind ourselves of some of those reasons. I think the other thing that we can get into with respect to reading, why we want to, ha to have read a book rather than to read a book, is because we want to impress people. Um, Alan Jacobs has this wonderful um, little segment uh, section paragraph in his in his book, and I just want to read this to you. I know this reading to you in a video isn't the greatest practice, but this is in a little section called "Slowly, Slowly," where he's talking about the importance of reading slowly, and he talks about uh, particular people who want to know what what books they should read. Um, because they want to be able to impress people at parties or in book clubs or at their place of work or whatever it is. And he says, you know, well, maybe you should develop a moral conscience and um, not worry about what other people think. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, there's an alternative. It's called lying. And he says, yes, lying is wrong. But sometimes in this world, we have to choose among evils. It is wrong to lie, but 
It may be still more wrong to read a bunch of books you don't want to read, and by read them, I mean cast your eyes across most of the lines on most of the pages in order to impress people whose opinion you shouldn't be deferring to anyhow. So it would be less bad, I think, to uh, take a little time to figure out what people will be impressed to hear that you're reading, use Wikipedia to find out just enough about those books to enable you to bluff plausibly when questioned, and then go back home and read whatever you want to read. And read it at your own pace without pausing even for a second to think about what your rate per words, rate of words per minute is. You probably read too fast anyway. I think that's just a wonderful um, reductio ad absurdum for this, this idea of, well, what reading is about is trying to show other people what I have read. And I think this can happen even if we aren't telling other people what we read. I, some of us, and I include myself in this uh, category, they're in a sense trying to impress themselves and show themselves, um, hey, look, uh, I, I have read this particular thing and therefore I must be a smart person, a good person, or whatever kind of person. Um, well, you know, that's just not very helpful to be honest. Um, so cut it out. The alternative, of course, is to read in order to learn, to study, to be educated, to perhaps be informed. I mean, to be informed is a way in which we read a dictionary. We're just looking for particular bits of information. Study is more comprehensive, but we also read looking for beauty or pleasure. Um, we read to uh, have a soul or spiritual experience, and all of these are very important outcomes of the process of, of reading. And that's, in the end, what we should be seeking for in our, in our reading. And um, as much as possible, push back on that attitude, that desire to have read a book. Now, I think there is some nuance uh, to add into this contrast, and that is that some of us have books that we have to read, and uh, for those working in history or those working in a particular science or those working uh, at being a, a thinker or um, having to study a particular area, having to study society in general, you end up having to read books that you pretty much know before you've read it aren't going to be very good books. Um, you aren't going to learn from them very much, but you have to read it because you have to know about a particular thing, a particular philosophy or a particular theology or a particular part of history or whatever it is. I think that's a legitimate part of reading and that doesn't quite count as having had read, um, but it does um, perhaps take out that enjoyment, pleasure, uh, positive quality that you um, should be looking for in, in some of your reading. And, and I find that some books I might start, um, or at least they, they kind of sit in the middle between wanting to read them and having to read them. And sometimes it's a bit, it's a bit mixed as I am working through it. Some parts of it I think, you know, well, I need to push through this uh, because I kind of have to read this. And on other uh, occasions, there's a sense of like, well, there's something I'm really getting from this. And, and I wouldn't uh, discount that too much. Just admit that some books are going to be a bit of a mixed bag and they might be very pleasurable for you at some times. You might be learning from them at other times you might actually be having a kind of soul experience with them at another time. And then maybe finally, it may the last chapter may be a matter of just having to read it just to sort of say, I've read the full book. It is incredibly sweaty here. Uh, lots of humidity in Germany these days. 
By the way, Sanctus is a not-for-profit institute, so if you benefit from these videos or anything that we're, we're doing, if you want to benefit other people, making a one-time donation to one of the various charities that we work with is a great way to help us. And for some of you, it might be the time to take a step to do some sort of regular donation once a month or something like that so that um, we can kind of count on that and keep going. What we are trying to do is introduce Europeans to spiritual formation and theology, and we are trying to do that in creative ways. So if you want to join us in that, check out sanctus.institute slash participate, and you uh, will find out the various ways that that's possible. As you know, I don't do these kinds of things very often in the videos, so um, we do keep that in mind. Um, but I'll see you next week. Bye. For the record, I don't actually endorse throwing books. They are valuable things, and... We shouldn't throw them.